All right, so this sodium hydroxide powder is something you could get from a lab catalog or whatever. You, you pour a pile of it into a beaker or something. How much do you pour in there? You pour 2.5 grams of this powder. So you measure that out, you put it in there, and the question is, how much acid do I need to pour on top of it in order to neutralize it so it's no longer basic, but it's neutral, exactly pH 7. And not only that, but it's not just any acid. I need to know what the concentration of the acid is because obviously, if I'm neutralizing it with a very strong acid, I'm probably not gonna need as much. But if I'm neutralizing it with a super weak acid, I'm probably gonna need to put a lot more on there to actually neutralize it. So in the problem, we're told how much base we have, and we're told what the concentration of the acid is we're using, and we're, we're, we're asked how many milliliters do we need to pour on there to actually do it. So the first thing you need to, to realize, uh, in my opinion, is to write down the chemical reaction. Right, because that's going to dictate basically everything else. So the chemical reaction is uh, hydrochloric acid, right? That's aqueous solution. That's what I'm pouring out of my beaker. Plus NaOH, that's a solid. And what's it going to yield? We've done this one before. What's going to happen is the sodium is going to go with the chlorine. So it's NaCl. And that's an aqueous solution because everything's basically sitting there. And then the H is going to go with the OH, it's going to make water like that. All right. Now we need to make sure that it's balanced. So we check. Here's one. Here's two hydrogens. There's two hydrogens there. One chlorine, one chlorine, one sodium, one sodium, one oxygen, one oxygen. I've already counted this hydrogen. So it is balanced as it stands. Okay. So I, I know I need to start with two and a half grams of this powder. And anytime you're dealing with grams in a chemistry problem, by now you should know that you need to figure out what the, the, um, the molecular weight or the molar mass of, of this compound is so that you can go from grams to moles. Because there's several levels in the solution. We're going to go to grams of NaOH to moles of NaOH. And then once I have moles, I can use this reaction to calculate how much acid I need and then so on. And then I can, I can go and do the rest of it. So before I actually do the solution, it's a really good idea to say NaOH, let me calculate how many grams per mole that stuff is. So if you look at sodium on the periodic table, it's 22.99 grams per mole. And if you look at oxygen, it's 15.99 grams per mole. And if you look at hydrogen, it's basically 1.00. I mean, there's a couple decimals there, but it's, so they're so far out. So what you get when you add all these together, this plus this plus this, is you get 39.98 grams per mole. All right, and this means that in every mole of sodium hydroxide that you, that you have, it's actually 39.98 grams. Okay, now I think we are ready to actually solve the problem, believe it or not. So you always want to start with what you know. Now it is true that you know what, what the concentration of your acid is, but really it makes more sense to start with what you're actually reacting. This is what you're given as sort of like the initial quantity. So you want to start with that, two and a half grams of NaOH. So 2.5 grams of NaOH, that's what we start with. And we've just calculated that for every mole of this stuff is 39.98 grams. So if I put 39.98 grams of NaOH, that's going to be one mole of NaOH. And the reason I arrange it this way, just like in all of our stoichiometry problems, is so I can cancel grams of sodium hydroxide with grams of sodium hydroxide. So what you've done in this calculation, if I were to just stop here, 2.5 times 1 divided by this, is I've basically converted my initial quantity to moles of sodium hydroxide. Now I know how many moles I have sitting in my initial beaker. I know I want to neutralize this many moles there. So this is the trick with neutralization reactions. This is the balanced chemical equation. It means that one mole of hydrochloric acid combines with one mole of this, yielding one mole of this and one mole of this. So if I start out with so many moles of NaOH, how do I calculate how many moles of HCl is going to be required? Well, for every one mole of this, I'm going to need one mole of HCl. So I can use the chemical reaction to figure that out. Now, it may be trivial, you may already see this, but basically the chemical reaction tells us that one mole of NaOH combines with one mole 
of HCl. So we're using the chemical reaction to basically jump from moles of NaOH to moles of hydrochloric acid. So what we've now calculated if we stop is how many moles of hydrochloric acid are going to fully combine with that initial quantity of, of sodium hydroxide. We start out with so much sodium hydroxide and we do this calculation, this will be how many moles will fully combine with it because we've figured that out from our reaction. If the coefficients were, if this were a different reaction and the coefficients were different, then we would have different coefficients here. But in the end of the day, the unit conversion tells you what you've got here is how many moles of hydrochloric acid are actually required. So that would be fine. That is how much acid that is required, but the problem doesn't say how many moles of HCl. It says how many milliliters of a certain stock solution do you have? So don't forget, acids are always going to be stored in, in liquid form, basically. So you're not going to be asked, well, how many moles of hydrochloric acid? Typically, you're going to be, you're going to be asked, how many milliliters of a certain solution uh, are you going to need? So you need to use the knowledge of how many moles you need combined with what the concentration of this is to find that answer. And the way you do that, let me continue this conversion on the bottom, so just pretend that it was kind of attached to the end. So we have moles of hydrochloric acid on the top. What do we have up here? We know that we have a bottle full of hydrochloric acid. This means that 0 0.250 moles exist in every liter of hydrochloric acid solution that I have. So if I arrange that conversion factor, 0 0.250 moles of HCl in one liter of hydrochloric acid solution. Okay, and if I arrange it this way, then the moles of hydrochloric acid combine with the moles of, or cancel with the moles of hydrochloric acid. If I do the calculation here, this is going to tell me how many liters of hydrochloric acid solution I need, but the problem doesn't say that. It says how many milliliters. So just take one extra minute to say that one liter of HCl solution is actually 1,000 milliliters of HCl solution. So you're basically using the metric system here to, to get to milliliters. So we have one liter of this, one liter of this. So everything is canceled. The only thing I have left is milliliters of hydrochloric acid solution. And that's exactly what I want. So if you take two and a half times one divided by this, times one divided by one, times one divided by 0.25, times a thousand divided by one, what you're going to get 250.1 milliliters of a solution that is 2,5 molar hydrochloric acid. And that is the final answer.